from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. The men's basketball team coming off of yet another victory inside of ACC play. Getting it done, doing what they need to do, and and being in a positive footing right now as they move forward here in the ACC. The Syracuse Orange men's basketball team having a a nice little run here. They've won seven of their last eight games, including three straight. All those games inside of the ACC, those three straight that they've had. So with that being said, the team is on pace to hopefully get themselves back ranked, but even more importantly than that, to show the committee that they deserve a spot inside of the NCAA tournament that will be coming up here. I know there's a a long way to go. There's a long road on the schedule here, but that's always the question. It's a question that I get pretty much season starts while we have media day in October. I get the question probably in July, June and July. Are they going to make the tournament? do you think they're going to make the tournament well before they even jump into anything so Syracuse uh, doing what they need to do right now winning handily over Miami which they you know Miami and this is the thing about Miami they have five guys on their team and I mentioned this on the show this week they have five guys on their team that can score double figures average double figures they once they get on from shooting threes they're dangerous and they showed that yesterday there's so many things that I had said going into the game that actually started to happen in the game but Syracuse just was too much for them. Syracuse is 14 and 5 overall, 5 and 1 in the ACC. They've won 3 in a row. They're 11 and 3 at home, 3 and 0 on the road, and 0 and 2 on neutral ground when they faced off against Connecticut and Oregon inside of Madison Square Garden. So, Syracuse will head back on the road to Virginia Tech this Saturday, January 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But before they do that, we're going to hear from them here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. So we're going to start off the conversation with Marek Dolajai. Marek Dolajai and I had the opportunity to speak on his five assists, five points, five rebounds, continuing to be one of the utility belts of this team, and this is what he had to say about it. I'm just doing my job, yeah. and I don't know. Now, the assist part of it, Alan Griffin was talking about and Adrian Autry as well. Just your vision out there and your timing, just what you could say about, you know, playing the forward position, yet you know where your guys are and you're able to feed them like a point guard. You know, I, I play all my life point guard, and I think I'm more like team player than when I'm open, I will shoot that. But I have to change, like, I had to make the open shots, I had to shoot those open shots, and I think when I shoot it, it will be more open, uh, and I get past the more. You've obviously made some shots and, and, and worked on that offensive side of the game, but also feeding your teammates. Just what you could say about the balance of that a little bit further. I'm just trying to do everything, you know, helping the uh, offense, helping defense, and just, you know, uh, we have good shooters in the, uh, here, and just feed them and just pass the ball. What can you say about Buddy Beheim's play the last couple he's games? He's just shooter, you know. Wow. He's just a bucket. Yeah. Yeah. He a hot hand, like this uh, last game, this like, this game, just passing ball and he make make it. The team has won three in a row and seven of the last eight. Just what you can say about the team clicking right now? Uh, we are getting better every day, but we, we have a tough game on Saturday, and we have to get it ready tomorrow, and we'll see. That coming from Marek Dolajai once again. Marek Dolajai joining Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora following the 20-point victory, 73-53, to over the Miami Hurricanes, most recently here at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse is on the road for three straight and not back at home until Tuesday, February 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern time against Florida State. So you'll see them when they come back to the Dome for that. And currently on the road, they are 3-0, and and they have an opportunity to continue that undefeated streak when they go to Virginia Tech, Boston College, and Pittsburgh, all coming up here in succession Saturday, Wednesday, and then the following Saturday. Up next is Tyus Battle, winning three straight in seven of the last eight games. I asked him about it, this streak that Syracuse has been on, and this groove that they've been in, this positive 
move that they have made from starting off a little bit shaky and having some tough moments, winning seven of their last eight games, the only loss within that being to Georgia Tech at home and winning three straight. Just what he can say about that. Um, I mean, we're playing better. We're playing uh, well on the defensive end. We're aggressive on the offensive end. Uh, we're attacking, looking for our shots, and that's what we have to play. 11 blocks is a team they had none. Just what you could say about the defense improving as the season's gone on? Uh, I think Pascal really stepped up in the second half. I think he, I don't know if he had four or five blocks, but uh, he was uh, really coming up and he had to guard the guy one on one at the foul line, and he did. I thought he did a great job doing that. Is there anything that Eli Hughes can't do in a game? I mean, he can score. And he and he jumps for every block. I mean, sometimes I get a little nervous sometimes, but uh, he goes up there and at least tries to get it. And uh, I thought that was a huge block tonight, and he knocked on, uh, I think, 6-3. So uh, it was a great shooting night. Just what you could say about Buddy and what he's been the last couple games and what he's brought off the bench. I mean, shooting the ball with confidence. Both Elijah and Buddy are shooting the ball with confidence. And uh, when teams play us in zone like that, they're going to get open looks. And uh, that's what we try to do. We try to look for them, too. And... Uh, I mean, they were knocking out shots today. That coming from Tyus Battle once again as we continue our conversations. We will be live in studio on video in just a few minutes with Jordan Newman. He's going to be joining me here for FML Friday morning live inside a wake-up call with Dan Tortora, but not before we have these voices on the broadcast. Elijah Hughes, we talk about utility belts. Mar- Marek Dolajai has been a big part of that. Five rebounds, five assists, five points in the game. Balancing it out, you look at his stat line, he's going to give you something. Well, Elijah Hughes, he's a utility belt as well. And Elijah Hughes in this game had you know a similar fashion. If you go up and down the line, not only did he have 22 points in the game, but he had three steals, three blocks, three assists, and three rebounds. No turnovers in the game. And this is what he had to say about being a man who can do it all for the team. Uh, just, you know, like I said, I'm trying not to be labeled as just a shooter. I want to be you know, a basketball player, and I try to being, work my game around that, yeah. And being with this team for a year and, you know, being able to practice and whatnot, just what you can say about your comfort level and what that's done for your game because you have become one of those key shooters and one of the guys that the team can lean on. Would you attribute that to the fact that you had a year to get comfortable with them? Oh, definitely. You know, I had a year, you know, I was playing with some of the starting team last year and uh, I was usually on the orange team, which was uh, walk-ons and the guys didn't really play much. And, um, I really attribute it to my, uh, my teammates this year, a lot of to coach as well. You know, he believes in me, and he wants me to shoot the ball when I'm open or just make plays, you know, so I, I, he, him believing in me helps me a lot. Coming from East Carolina, what did you take away from the season that you had over there, and, you know, was there anything that you kind of built off of? Um, just be consistent. You know, I wasn't really consistent. East Carolina had a lot of freshman struggles, which is normal. You know, I just kind of learned from that. You know, I had a year to think about it and you know, watch guys that were consistent, and so I just try to – Take as much as I can from that. Hitting a three that can take the lead, making that 75-foot shot or blocking a shot, what's your favorite so far this season? The 75-foot shot. The 75-footer. So, yeah. Bring me into and we didn't get to talk about that, so yeah. just bring me into that shot. And if you felt at all like that had a chance or if that was more luck and just yeah. he uh, Well, you know, I, there was two seconds left. I got the ball and I threw it. And then I seen like it started to curve a little bit as it was like it looked like it was about to go in. So I told myself, that's going in. <laughs> and then I was here to tell myself it's gonna be the back rim or go in the basket. And it went in the basket and I I didn't know how to react. I just stood and smiled. Is there anything you can't do? No, I feel like I could do it. I could do it all. A little bit of everything. All right. yeah. Fair enough. Thanks, man. Appreciate <laughs> Thank you. it. Appreciate it. That come in once again from Elijah Hughes. Elijah Hughes, 22 points in the game, and the record held by Syracuse for threes in a game is nine. Multiple players hold that record, and he was close. He would have had seven. He would have been seven of ten, but they they called one off. They said it was it was inside of the arc, so he ended six of nine from three-point. The team as a whole was 14 of 30 from three-point range, and... That was one shy of the team's best in a game, which is 15. So very close to shattering some records. More importantly, Syracuse got the victory by 20 over Miami to improve to 14-5 and 5 and 5-1, five and one, a very impressive 5-1 and one in ACC play. And the final conversation that we have with the Syracuse Orange as they head into their three-game road stints is with Buddy Beheim, 
Two games, he's been in double figures. Single game, career high, 13 points happened against Pittsburgh at home, and he backs that up by having 12 points in this game and hitting a bunch of threes as well. He goes three for six on the night from long range, and this is what Buddy had to say about going two games in double digits. Uh, just definitely helps a lot to see your shot going early. Making the first two, first one, sh- first shot you take is something that helps a lot. But uh, just keep shooting, and then my teammates are giving me good luck, so I got. I know I'm going to take them, and, and I know there's a good chance that you're going to fall. And my coach is believing in me, and, and that's just been a huge uh, help for me, and definitely keeps me confident. The team was trailing and chasing Miami in the first half, and you were able to help knock down the shots and help to tie the game and then ultimately take the lead. Just what you can say about being a part of the momentum change. Uh, it's definitely something that I want to do whenever I get in is uh, just help win no matter what and do the best I can for us to take a lead or keep a lead going. And, and luckily I was, uh, hit a couple shots, got some open looks, and um, just a lot of fun when you, when you can do that. You said that Miami kind of almost baited you to shoot on a night like tonight when the team makes 14 threes and 14 to 30. I mean, I guess if they're going to leave you out there. Yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of open looks. Um, they were more packed in the zone, so when I when I saw that, I knew I was going to get my opportunity to shoot, and I was just ready coming in, and, and my teammates were finding me, so it was a lot of fun. This team has been riding some some good shooting nights, you know, obviously against Pittsburgh, against Miami, on the road against Duke. Just what you could say about there were some off nights and there were some off moments there. How has the team bounced back? And I mean, I, there's going to be days where the shot's not going to fall, but just what you can say about how dangerous the team is looking right now as opposed to some of those earlier games. Yeah, I mean, we just had to get more of a feel for, for playing with each other and just getting confident as a team. Uh, just uh, having Frank back these last 10 games or so, having him healthy getting back has helped a lot, and he's been a huge part of uh, shooting. He tells me every time I get in the shoot, no matter what, if it's 10 threes taken, and he's helped me a lot confidence-wise, and, and the whole team has helped me. Just And we all believe in each other, so that helps when you get out there. We, did, we don't care if someone misses. We know we keep shooting, and if it's, if it's an off night, the next game could be completely different. Is, are there any jitters left? I know you, you and I were speaking about you know, growing up and running around the dome during the game and now being on the court running around. Do you feel any jitters, any butterflies at the beginning of these games anymore, or has that all gone away? Well, it's gone away for the most part. Obviously, it's, it's still going to be there, you know, when you when you make a three or something or when you just know you've got to get an open look. It's just something that's so exciting and just you want to make the shot, and it's just a great feeling when you when you make those and hear the crowd go crazy. And It's always going to give me uh, goosebumps, and it's just, uh, it's just so amazing to, to be playing out there. This team lost to Oregon and lost to uh, UConn early on in the season. They had the loss to Georgia Tech here, and fans are kind of getting different feels for it and you know some negative thoughts. But now 5-1 and one in the ACC. What does that say about how the team's clicking right now? Uh, you know, we can just face adversity. We know earlier in the year when we lost those two games that we had to come back and win some. That could be dug ourselves in a hole there, but we got out of it, and Georgia Tech was another little setback, but we knew that if we turned it around these last couple of days like we have, that we knew that uh, um, we'd put ourselves in a good position. We know we can win these games, and we're just going to keep believing in each other and keep this momentum going. Where's the leadership come from in those moments where there were some trying times? We're seeing the success right now. Who would you attribute that to? Uh, Frank's been a huge part of it. He's a senior guy. He's a great leader. He's been here before. He's been down. Uh, he struggled himself. He's been on a team that struggled. He knows what it takes to be a great team, and he's really helped us all just get a get a little um, – confidence in, in all of it, each other and he's definitely helped us as a leader. Last question for me and I asked Tyus the same thing. Is there anything that Elijah Hughes can't do? <laughs> I don't think so. He's one of the most skilled players I've ever seen and ever played with and he's just a lot of fun to play with. Thanks, man. No Appreciate problem. it, man. Yeah, no problem. That coming once again from Buddy Bayheim, the Syracuse Orange are 14-5 and five overall, 5-1 five and one in the ACC, folks. And as we move forward here, Syracuse finding their success and they're heading on to the road. They have three games on the road. They're 3-0 and currently in true road games this season, winning their games on the road so far and finding some success with that. They have won in their true road games when they've gone to Ohio State as well as to Notre Dame and most recently at Duke 95-91 in overtime against the number one ranked team in the nation.